So, we are merely a few months away from the release of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl. And let's just say that the reception for these games has been less than warm and welcoming. Now, the clear dilemma with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is that these games are almost too similar to games they're remaking, with every previous remake going much further beyond the original scope of the games they are remaking. A prime example being Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, that for example included Mega Evolutions, Soaring, and loads of other features as well as the Delta episode that was never there in the original Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. It honestly almost feels like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl were only really created because a team at Game Freak wanted to make Pokemon Legends Arceus, but then realized that the hardcore fans would want to revisit the original Sinnoh from the original games to take on the gym leaders, the trainers, and Pokemon from those original Diamond and Pearl and Platinum games, so they had to give that project over to someone else to still create a remake of some way or shape while they wanted to try on a different project. And therein lies the issue. They essentially just made BDSP to satisfy that market and those fans as a way to say, hey, we did it so you can't complain. Whereas the scope of the project then of course got limited based on what we can see from the one trailer so far. Also, the lack of information and news for these games has not helped Game Freak, nor the Pokemon company, nor the company Ilka who are making it because all it really does is it makes like BDSP seem almost barren and empty with nothing new to show as they can't even make a new trailer because the game essentially is so identical to original versions Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. That's the way it feels at least to us as fans that it feels that the games are pretty much, you know, empty. There's nothing there. And then, of course, we have the subject of fan projects. So what am I referring to? Well, in recent years, fan projects and fan arts have sort of given us a glimpse into what we can possibly want to see and what can be done if fans get their hands on the tools and knowledge, as well as artistic skills, to recreate something much larger and greater than anything ever created by the original developers themselves. And for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we have some insane examples and some really awesome ones, in particular these prime examples right here. So what you're looking at right here, these two projects are more or less just proof of concepts and fun art projects to showcase what Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes could look like and what most people probably wanted or preferred the games to look like compared to what we actually are getting with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl. First, we have the project by that guy Mike, who posts his own versions, version rather of Pokemon Diamond Pearl Remaster that he's working on for fun to show what the games could look like if they embrace the art style and general like kind of concept of games like Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, as well as Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Now, this project by Mike is simply just a proof of concept and for fun to show what a proper remake or remaster of Diamond and Pearl could look like if done the way people sort of expected it to look like, right? So please note, this will never be made into a real playable game, as once again, it's far more or less just a proof of concept to show fans as well as Game Freak that there is much better ways to for them to have made these games, right? In terms of style and graphics, when it comes to at least the visual side of these games, they could have done it much better. And that's what this project right here basically shows. It's a proof of concept more or less, just showing us what they could have gone for. Now, Mike's project does also make me feel sort of bad as I feel like it sort of shows us exactly what they 100% could have achieved with Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl but we will never never get that since they decided on the whole like tiny chibi style so basically Mike's project Mike's project is a clear thing that shows us how we could have gotten a game the way we wanted it alongside a bigger project like Legends Arceus, but due to the Pokemon company's decisions, we never will. And also, of course, whatever Ilka decided alongside Masuda as somebody who has influence on that game. Basically, this is just a way to make us feel bad because looking at this, we get to see what they could have gone for, what we could have gotten, right? Basically, it's just a way of us to see the dreams we'll never achieve, right? That's what this is with this like project. It shows us what never will happen. 
However, the next project is a much larger scale and shows us more of what we want the next generation of Pokemon to look like and feel like, and that is the massive Sinnoh project by Millennium. Now, Millennium is a friend of mine and decided to basically take on the task of creating a video project to showcase what Sinnoh Remix or a Sinnoh-based game could look like if done right. Now, his project is on a massive scale. It includes an open world. It's got remade cities from the games, so we're talking the original Diamond Pearl Platinum games. It's got legendaries with cutscenes to them, mountable Pokemon, on, as well as loads more things such as the inclusion of custom brand new Mega Evolutions. He even took the time to make unique and interesting cutscenes and animations that showcase how epic the Sinnoh remakes could have looked like if they were made in the kind of like next gen style like that we were sort of expecting from Pokemon when it moved to the Switch originally. Now Millennium's projects, uh, project to me isn't what I expected the Diamond and Pearl remakes to look like. It's more in line with, you know, I sort of expect the next generation of Pokemon to look like. What generation might look like instead as it's far more on that end of the spectrum but also never guaranteed when to get a game that looks like this ever in Pokemon we can always dream but who knows? So what does all of this mean? What is the dilemma we have run into with the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl games? Well, the dilemma is that we essentially for the first time have two mainline games releasing this close to each other where one of them is a normal remake that isn't even really normal and the other one is a totally different game with an open world set in the past of the Pokemon world. Sinnoh in particular, which also is a brand new thing for Pokemon to do a game or make a game that's set in the past for the mainline games like this. Also, this game is clearly a big step and it is so different from any other game we've ever had since it's aiming to do something very strange by putting us in the past of the Pokemon world, but not just that, on top of that, making the game open world, probably removing a lot of things we're used to, and just trying out something very strange and different, kind of akin to what Breath of the Wild did for the, you know, Legend of Zelda franchise and changing it so drastically. That's what this game is doing, but the strange part is they still decided to create remakes, and these remakes themselves are so different from how remakes tend to be, because these are one-to-one -one recreations, lacking a lot of differences, making you wonder, what is the purpose of even buying them if I can already go and play Diamond and Pearl? If it's gonna look the same and sound the same and play the same, then what's the point? Because it is the same, right? What's the point of even buying it at that point? And that's kind of the thing, right? It seems like these games were really only made and they're really being given away to another studio for the sake of allowing Game Freak to work on a totally different project and totally different kind of style of video game and style of Pokemon game while a different studio still creates a remake that people probably still aren't going to buy and people still wanted because I think they understood that. I think they the, themselves, I think Game Freak, the Pokemon company, Nintendo all kind of had a meeting and realized, okay, people definitely want a remake. They want to go revisit the Sinnoh they remember, but we don't have the resources to have Game Freak make two games at the same time, so let's just hand that over to a different studio that can remake it. Now, how will they remake it? Well, what's the cheapest way to remake it? Oh, making them super tiny chibi characters. Let's go for that. That seems like what they kind of went for. Or maybe they chose the art style because maybe they thought it would be more nostalgic that way. Honestly, we're arguing here that maybe like, oh, you know, they chose the art style because it's easier and cheaper to do and it's Ilka and that's why it's not Game Freak making us that's why but honestly they could have made this choice because they thought artistically it would be more appealing and artistically it might actually make people buy it more because it's so similar to how the old games look like and we always ask them to do things like they did in the past so maybe they thought this could be a good option. And the issue with all of this is that it's sort of impossible to figure these things out because there are fans making kind of better versions of the Sinnoh remakes. And meanwhile, we also have two Sinnoh based games that are so different from each other, with one being a totally new concept and the other being a remake that doesn't do what the previous remakes did. Making for a strange situation where we have fans that don't really know what to feel about each of the projects. Some people are super excited about BDSP, but hate the idea of Legends Arceus because it looks barren to them. Meanwhile, others love Legends Arceus but hate BDSP for being a lackluster remake, looking to lack anything new and interesting in terms of additions that are new in it, like previous remakes such as Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire and Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, as well as Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Meanwhile, we also have fans that are, you know, aren't really getting anything from these games that they want, right? They're getting nothing, you know, in terms of design, in terms of gameplay, none of that. So the question really is, what are we gonna do next?
Basically, we are in a weird crossroads where we are going to get a good amount of new projects and interesting things, but the problem is that none of the projects are hitting 100% for everyone, which of course is impossible, but things are sort of in a weird state, and the question is, will the future remakes follow this formula of BDSP, and will we have actually more Legends games, like more games like Legends Arceus, or will we instead be given something totally different? We really can't predict or know exactly what we might get in, you know, be getting in our future, in the near future, to really speak about as well, because honestly, Honestly, everything is shifted. Everything is really shifted for Pokemon. The dilemma they're in right now is they're creating remakes, but they're so different from what we remember them to be like or what we're used to them being like. And also, they're trying out totally different projects, putting the whole like cycle of Pokemon into this brand new era where it's not following the same pattern it used to. Because Pokemon has been in this sort of pattern way for a long time that you can kind of map out a bit, but now that's totally being thrown out the window and they're going for a totally different pattern. So the question really is, what do you all think? Are you excited for Legends Arceus or will you be buying Pokemon BDSP? Or perhaps you're going to be getting both. Let me know in the comment section down below. Goodbye.